So today I am here with a really, really awesome organ. Now a lot of my followers really love pipe organs and a lot of times when I upload an organ video, particularly an electronic organ, a lot of people will come in and say, okay, this organ is awesome, but a pipe organ is the real deal. Come on, go find a pipe organ and play it. Now I haven't been able to find a true pipe organ, but I'm one step closer and today I am here with a digital pipe organ that in my opinion does a very good job of reproducing a pipe organ sound. Now you're probably seeing these flute pipes up here. These are not connected with this organ and they're simply a display and they do look very cool but these aren't connected and so they actually have nothing to do with this organ other than that they're from a pipe organ. Now this is a Johannes Sweelink 30 organ and one of my favorite things about it, I love this organ very much, but one of my favorite things about it is this really hefty roll top cover that's really cool. It slides away just like so to reveal the three manual many many stop monstrosity in a very good way that this organ is. It's an absolute beast and it's so much fun to play. It has a lot of cool features. Not all of them I know what they do. For example, this here is some sort of thing to do with MIDI. It says on it MIDI data filer MDF3. It's got some buttons on it. Record, pause, start, stop, file data, cursor, something to do with MIDI. I don't do a whole lot with MIDI so if any of you guys want to tell me what exactly this does, let me know. There's also more MIDI controls over here. MIDI pause positive, MIDI great, MIDI swell, MIDI pedal, chorus, and intonation one. And then there's also a screen that probably has something to do with the MIDI as well. So we have a whole bunch of stops, and what I'm going to do first here is I'm going to run you through the sounds of each stop, particularly on the swell manual, and I'm just going to briefly run through them on the great, the positive, and the pedal as well. And then after that, I'm going to give you a demonstration of what this organ sounds like. I'm going to play a few little short selections, which I think give a very good demonstration of what this organ sounds like. It has a really fantastic sound. Now, speaking of the sound, it has internal speakers down here, but you can also connect it up to tone cabinets or speakers, and maybe you could even hook it up to a Leslie, which might be kind of odd, but maybe that could be done. I'm not positive, though. And we have a stack of tone cabinets over there uh, in the corner of the room. I don't know if those gigantic ones are part of it as well. And they actually come with this organ, which is really fantastic. They have a great sound, and they really add a lot to the instrument. And uh, so if someone were to buy this instrument and put it in their church or put it in like a really big room, those tone cabinets would come with it and you could mount them all over the room to give you a really a surround sound feel and make it really feel like a church organ. So what's kind of interesting about a three manual organ is typically if you only have two manuals, the top manual is the swell and the bottom manual is the great. However, since this is a three manual organ, the uh, top manual here is the swell, the bottom manual, the middle manual here is the uh, the uh, the great, and then the bottom manual now becomes the positive, and uh, it's spelled positive with an F at the end instead of VE, and that's simply the name of the manual. When you get more than three. I have no idea what they start becoming called, but I do know that this is the swell, this is the great, and this is the positive. So if we start off with the swell, because it seems to have the most stops on it, we come over here and the they have these really nice toggle stops. You can either hit the top or the bottom of them, and it will toggle them on and off. So this one here is called a quintaton. It has a really interesting sound. Now, some of these I know what they are, and some of them I don't know. So if any of you guys, I know a lot of you are quite knowledgeable about organs, church organs, pump organs, and all kinds of stuff. Let me know what some of these do, because um, I don't know the exact function of some of these sounds. The principle, I believe, is kind of like your main sound, which is why it's called the principle. But again, if I'm wrong about that, let me know. Kind of has a really nice flute sound. This is called a roar flute. Sounds German. It's a very, very nice, clean flute sound. Very beautiful. This is a viola di gamba. Now, a, a viola di gamba is a type of instrument that's related to uh, violins and other instruments. It's rather similar to them, but it has some different features. So this, I assume, is supposed to sound like a viola di gamba. But in a real pipe organ, there wouldn't be strings inside. There would actually be uh, special pipes that are somehow shaped to somewhat sound like strings. Now this is a Vox Celeste. Sometimes it's spelled Voix Celeste. And what this does is by itself, it sounds pretty normal. It just sounds like a normal pipe organ. But when you combine it with something else is when the magic of it really happens. I'm going to combine it with the viola da gamba as well as the roar flute. Hear that? It gives it a chorus effect, and that's because the Vox Celeste is slightly detuned from the other sounds on purpose to kind of give it more depth. And when you combine it with a bunch of other sounds, it really, really adds more depth and kind of uh, just really just more depth to the sound. It's really beautiful. Now, the octave sound is basically 
just an octave higher or two than the roar flute. The roar flute is eight feet, and this is a four foot stop. So that means this is going to be half as long or an octave higher than the roar flute. So if I play C here on the roar flute, again, if I'm pronouncing that wrong, let me know. I'm not great with these foreign names. And I hit the octave, it's an octave higher. Then you can combine that and get an octave sound on every single note. And you can do that with the same with the octave two foot, the octave one foot as well. Hear that? It's a really high pitched sound. So you got that because that's three octaves higher than the eight foot stop here. The copple flute, I don't think we've talked about. It's a flute sound, is a four foot stop. Again, so it's kind of like the octave sound. You can combine those, they have a slightly different sound. This one's a lot cleaner and more flute like. This one here seems to be like an octave of the principal. That's what it sounds like. What, that's what that sounds like to me. The solitional. Sounds kind of like a flute. Interestingly enough, they're both four foot stops, but they have a different sound. I guess it's the same pitch, but there's just different harmonics. Flute twelfth is a two and two thirds um, foot stop. So it's actually, when I play this note, it's not actually playing C, it's playing a different note, but you combine that with other sounds to add more detail to the sound. You hear it kind of add some distance in there, you take that out. That distance is gone, add it back in. So that's kind of cool. We have another octave, we already talked about that. A walled flute, I assume it's going to be a flute sound. It's a two foot stop, so it's really high pitched. A nasard, I do not know what that is, let me know. It just sounds like a flute. Octave, we already talked about that. A sesquialter, interesting, I do not know what's going on here. That is interesting. It says a two right there, so. As you can hear, it's very dissonant, so I assume that's also meant to add more uh, harmonic variation to the sound, which is exactly what it does. I assume that's what that's there for. That's what it sounds like it. You wouldn't use that by itself, because frankly, by itself, it sounds quite strange, because there's not, it sounds a lot different than we're used to. The sharp sound seems to be a similar idea. Very shrill, very high pitched, and also adds more harmonic variation. Now these are trumpet sounds. This one here is called a fagotto. And it's this really wacky sound. Kind of sounds like a trumpet a little bit, but really low. Festival trumpet. Yep, yeah, sounds like a trumpet. What's cool is on a real pipe organ, we add there, there are actually trumpet pipes that are shaped kind of like a trumpet bell and they actually function very much like a trumpet. So when you activate those in a real pipe organ, it sounds like there's like 50 trumpets playing at once and it's absolutely crazy. I'm not quite getting that exact sound here because I don't have it cranked up real loud because I'm in a store and there's other people here. But if I did do that, it would have a similar sound. We have a chromorn, has a reedy sound. Very nice. Oboe, which as you could guess, it sounds like an oboe. A shalmai, it's spelled S-H-A-L-M-E-I. So that seems to be a kind of a another trumpet sound. And then the tremulant swell, what that does is it's actually quite fun. Basically, I'm just gonna activate a bunch of these here. Basically, it adds a tremulant sound. If I, if I deactivate it, I might have chosen a too complicated sound. This is hard to hear now. Let me turn off some of these. Hear that? It adds a tremulant sound. which is awesome as well. Now, the great manual, I'm not gonna go through everything here because it has a lot of the same things as the swell does, but it has a few unique ones as well, such as a conical flute, which is a two foot stop, so it's really high pitched. Has a cool sound, a super octave, which seems to be just a normal octave, but it's a two foot stop. We have a cornet. Mixture which seems to be a rather dissonant collection of pipes. 
that once again would add more harmonic variation to the sound. We have a fun one here. This is a contra trumpet. So it's like the normal trumpet, but 16 feet instead of 8 feet. So the normal trumpet is this. This is the contra trumpet with the normal trumpet. Really fun. We also have a Vox Humana stop. Which I think does a similar thing to the Vox Celeste sound, but with a different sound. I think that's what that's doing. And we also have a tremolant there. For the positive manual, we have a very small amount of stops. We have a regal stop that's different from the other ones. Some kind of a trumpet sound, kind of. Octave stop, a cymbale. Very, very high pitched. Again, used for adding detail to the rest of the sound. Uh, and everything else there seems to be about the same as on the other two manuals. We also have a tremulant for the positive manual as well. We also have pedal stops over here. Actually, since we're on this side of the organ, I figured I'll just talk more about this. We have more positive sounds that I didn't notice. Oh, these are like bells. How cool. So these are chimes. And I assume you can combine them with organ sounds. Yes, you can. We have harp slash harpsichord. Let me deactivate the rest of the organ so we can really hear that. Ah, it is a harp. That's very nice. We have strings slash orchestral strings. We have gospel slash tibia organ. Oh my gosh, it's supposed to sound like a B3. That's fantastic. I think that's what that's supposed to be sounding like. I imagine that's what it's supposed to sound like, and then tremolo, I assume, goes with that. Yeah, it does. That's pretty cool. So not only does this organ do church sounds, but it also has a few extra sounds in there as well. I really like that harp sound. That one sounds absolutely beautiful to me. I like that one. We have a master volume switch. We also have a transposer switch, which is kind of fun. So if you're playing something. That's exactly, that's exactly what it does. This is a pitch knob. So you can basically just gently change the pitch. So instead of being, I assume, at the center position, it's at A440. You can change that very subtly if you want to be in different style tunings. You can make it a little flat or a little sharp. A couple more things on this half of the organ. These are the MIDI controls I was telling you about. They have MIDI positive, MIDI great, MIDI swell, MIDI pedal, chorus, and intonation too. Don't know what those do. Don't know what those do. I'm not going to hit them because I don't want to mess up anything and then have me not be able to operate the organ and you know not be know, not know what was going on. But those are MIDI controls, and I assume you can use this as a really fancy MIDI controller. Probably maybe input songs and have the organ play it through MIDI. Perhaps that would be really cool. This little red button here, you might be wondering about. That is actually the power switch for the organ. It's surprisingly small, but it's just a simple red button that you hit and then the organ turns on. Now over here we have more controls as well. We have pedal sounds as well. So these are the stops that control the pedal and the sub bass one is particularly fun, but I'll start off with the principal here. Really low tones. It's the sub bass, very similar, but even lower. You might not be able to hear that, but it's thunderous in the room. Really fantastic. The uh, tone cabinets are doing a great job there. There's a couple bass ones over there. I'm sure that's what makes that so and so awesome. We have an octave. So you combine that with the sub bass. We have a gedact or jedact. I've heard of people talking about this before in videos on YouTube. I don't know exactly what it does. And I'm probably botching that pronunciation again. But it is also another variation of an eight foot stop. We have a corral bass. Bass flute, can control by the pedals. A knockthorn. It only seems to be available in the half, the top half of the pedal ranks. It's not working. Oh, maybe it is. I wasn't pushing them down hard enough. This is a, I don't even want to pronounce that. Uh, it looks German. Any German 
people out there, let me know how you pronounce that word and what it means. Also like some of the ones up here, that seems to add some distance as well as harmonic difference to the sounds. We have a 32 foot bombard stop. Oh my god. That is wild. I love that. We have a contra trumpet again. Trumpet. And a clarion. So those are the pedal sounds. We also have some accessories here that will take the swell sounds and put it on the great, positive to great, swell to positive, great to pedal, swell to pedal, positive to pedal. So we have a bunch of accessories. And then we have a couple more knobs down here. And then I'm finally done talking about the features on this organ. And then I'll be able to get around to playing it. So we have a cathedral sound, which essentially is the reverb. So if I play something here, hear the reverb. Pretty subtle at the moment. If I turn it way up, it gets a bit louder. And if I turn it way off, then the sound becomes very, very dry, as it would be in this room. Length is similar. It is the length of how long the pipes resonate after you're done playing them. Rather subtle, but you combine that with reverb. Oh, length is the length of the reverb. That makes sense. That makes sense. OK. On some organs, length is different from cathedral than reverb because there's sustain and reverb, but in this case, length actually controls the reverb. So I was wrong about that. Length is the length of reverb. Which has a really lovely sound, but I kind of like it right around here. I assume maybe this controls the size of the room. I'll bet you this controls the size of the room, and this is actually the length of the reverb. I'll bet you that's how it works. Memory lock is a little lock here that you can turn, and I assume what that does is it actually lights up this little set button down here for the presets, and I assume what that does is you put it in a certain position and then take out the key, and then people can't alter your presets that you have laid in, which is a really nice feature, because if you, if you are a church organist and you have all your presets laid out for your... Um, for the next uh, performance in church, and then someone else comes along and messes up all your presets, and then you go to perform your song, and everything sounds wacky. That wouldn't be good. So you can set up all your presets, and then lock the organ, and then let other people come in, change their own presets. But then when you, when you come back and put the key in, your own presets, I assume, will come back. So that's a pretty cool feature. There's also presets here, a lot of buttons that I don't exactly know what they do, but essentially you have presets and you can push them. And as you can see, there's different buttons lighting up. There's nothing on seven, but this is the sound on eight. We've got some stuff on the swell, the great, and the positive, as well as some stuff on the pedal. So that's what the presets do. They're pretty standard on organs. But I really love the sound of preset number four. Someone else already programmed that, programmed that in for me. But I really love how it sounds with this Bach hymn. So what I'm going to do is play a short little Bach piece on this organ, and hopefully you enjoy it. So hopefully you enjoyed that quick little sample of how this organ sounds. It's a really, really awesome organ, and I really love how it sounds. I think if I were able to turn the volume up a bit more and just have it in a really big room, I think it would sound awesome, especially if all those speakers were all around me like I talked about earlier. It would really have an awesome church organ sound. And of course, this is geared towards churches, and that's why it looks so awesome, and that's why it has the ability to hook up a whole bunch of speakers around the room to really give it a church organ sound. Now, I think I'm also going to play some other things on this organ as well. I'm going to set up 
uh, the stops here, and I'm going to play some fun stuff here, I think. Let's see here. Let's do... I want something nice and gentle. I think that'll be good. All right, I think I'm ready. So now I'm going to play the uh, Davy Jones theme from Pirates of the Caribbean on this instrument. And I believe it's so fun to play that song on organs. And I believe there was this uh, uh, scene in the, I think it was the second movie, where you see Davy Jones actually playing his organ on his ship. And I think he was using his tentacles. It was really weird. But it's the song works so good on organs and other instruments like that. So I just it's fun to play around with it. So hope you enjoy it. I, was, I started to change up some of the sounds in mid-performance, so I had to take my hand off the key to hit the buttons. But what's convenient is, especially if you're using the swell manual, the buttons are right here. And so especially if you got used to playing the instrument, it wouldn't be difficult at all for you to know exactly where the uh, buttons, the stops were that you wanted to hit. So you could just be playing it and go, boom, I want that, or boom, I want that on the other manual. And it would be very, very easy to hit. They're very responsive. I haven't hit one yet and had it not trigger. They seem to be very, very high quality buttons. Another series of sounds that I like are these bad boys right here. Let's <laughs> As you can hear, not only can this organ be used with uh, hymns and church music, such as these Book of Hymns right here, you can also play very, very fun music on it, like Pirates of the Caribbean. And uh, it's just a lot of fun to play that song on different instruments to see how it sounds like. And I think that kind of worked pretty well. So I think that is a review. Oh, I forgot to mention down here um, that we have pedal pistons. Now, what this side of them do, these are preset keys. So basically, they control the same buttons as up here, as I showed you earlier, the preset button. So when you kick it, this that's actually number seven. So we have, which one does this do? This one does eight, this one does six, this one does four, this one does two, and this one does one. So it's a little bit, it's a little backwards from how you'd think it would be. So this is one, and you could probably see the numbers there. This controls one, this hits two, this is three, this is four, this is five. So these actually control the preset buttons. So instead of having to push the button with your hand and taking your hand off the key, you can actually kick one of these and skip around to different presets and do, uh, sequential presets and change the sound of the organ just by kicking a button rather than taking your hand off the key, which is a great idea. They seem to be made of brass, as you can hear. That's definitely metal, has that metal ring to it. They have a very nice feel and they seem to be very well constructed, as they should be, because you are kicking them. We also have others down here, and these control that series of buttons labeled accessories up top. And when I hit them, you can actually see the lights light up. If you come up to the top, you can see here that some of these lights here will turn on and off. We have positive to pedal. We have swell to great to pedal. We have swell to pedal. We have swell to great. We have positive to great. We have swell to positive. You get the idea. These buttons here will activate that so you can, whoa, that one hits all of them. Oh my gosh, that one is, it says Tutty on the little label down there. And this is going to be very loud, but this activated literally every, si almost every single stop. For some reason it didn't get some of these. I don't exactly know why, maybe it was supposed to. Uh, yeah, I imagine it's not supposed to hit the tremolent ones. That was by, uh, that's supposed to happen. 
Um, that is fantastic. So you hit a button on the pedals, and then it actually will literally turn on all of the stops on the organ. For some reason, it's not getting that one. Don't know why. Maybe it's not supposed to. And it also doesn't activate the tremolence, which makes sense, because you might not always want the tremolence. But that's a really cool feature, and I like how you can kick that and then activate literally every single sound on the organ. So if you want to get really bombastic, you kick that note, everything lights up, and then you can play the crazy loud part of the piece. So as you can tell, this organ is a lot of fun to play. It is geared towards church organs, but that still means that it's a very, very fun organ. Church organs aren't actually boring. They can be very, very fun, particularly a real pipe organ. And I hope someday to be able to find a real pipe organ. But for now, this will have to do. And I'm, I'm slowly making my way up. I started off with Hammond organs. Now I've made my way to an actual proper church organ. And someday in the future, I will hopefully be able to play a pipe organ. So if that sounds interesting to you, you might want to think about subscribing. And if you like organs a lot, you would definitely want to go back and check out my channel. I've got videos on Lowry organs. Hammond organs, Roland organs, all kinds of cool stuff. They're awesome instruments and they're a lot of fun. And also, if you're curious as to where I found this instrument, since it is for sale and it is a lot of fun to play, I will put the information for the store where I'm at down in the description of this video. So if you're in this area and you're interested in checking it out, which I advise, it's a lot of fun, particularly if you're an organist and you've never played on a three manual organ before. It's so much fun and I love it. It's a great instrument. You might want to come by and check it out. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. And if you want to subscribe, thank you very much. And like I said, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.